In this video, I will show you how I create my digital presentations. Before I begin a quick introduction, my name is Will Navis. I am a local, state, and national presenter. I am also an IAFERD past president. And in 2013, I was selected as the IAFERD Elementary PE Teacher of the Year. When I think about putting together a presentation, I always use Google Slides. And I use them because Number one, there are a lot of fun templates that you can find from Slides Mania or Slide Carnival that really allow you to make the presentation unique and your own. Google Slides will also automatically save your work as you go. Years ago, when I first started doing presentations, I would use a different program and you would always have to remember to save your work. And sometimes I wouldn't, I would get up and leave, I'd come back later and my computer powered off or for any other reason I would lose all my work. Whereas with Google Slides, I can step away from my computer and know that it will always be automatically saved for me. I also like Google Slides because it gives me the ability to insert and embed a wide variety of things, including pictures, videos. I can even record an audio to go with my slides. Once I've put together my slide presentation, I like to write just a loose script for myself of what I want to include during my presentation. It's nothing fancy, I might have some bullet points, maybe a phrase or two or a statement that I really wanna make sure I get across. And I'll even create a loose time schedule just to make sure that I get close to the anticipated or the expected runtime, especially if it's gonna be a longer presentation. Once I have that, I then go to Screencastify, which is just a way to record what's happening on your screen. In fact, I'm using Screencastify right now. And I like Dreamcastify because it allows me to edit video clips so I don't have to do it in one take. It also will automatically save to Google Drive for me, which is great because then I have access to that video wherever I'm working. If you're curious about how to use Screencastify, I do have extra videos I'd be more than happy to share with you. Just let me know. A couple final thoughts. Learn from those who have gone before you. Bo Phillips, who's a member of the Illinois Fab Four, told me, definitely make a checklist or bullet points. And I, I agree 100% with that. Becky Fulmer, who is a, a state and national presenter, also co-founder and curator of uh, CBHPE.org, told me that we set a timer so that we can better pace our presentations. And that's another great strategy that you can use for yourself. You know, taking the first step is always the hardest part of a journey but please remember that there are people out there that are willing to help. All you have to do is reach out. You can reach out to anyone on the IAFERD's tech committee. You can reach out to the Phys Ed Twitter community as well, or IAFERD's Facebook group. If you want to reach me, you can email me at wnavis at iaford.org or at Twitter using my, my uh, username at navis underscore PE. Thank you for watching. I look forward to seeing your digital presentation soon. Hi, I'm Rebecca Meyer. I'm an elementary PE teacher at Sleepy Hollow Elementary School in Community Unit School District 300. Over the past 25 years, I've taught at four different schools in the district, three elementary and one high school. I've been an IAPERN member for most of my career and I'm currently the president-elect of the Northern District. I'm relatively new to presenting I presented at two Northern District workshop, workshops and did two presentations last year at the APERD convention. Although I don't like recording myself, I don't think most people do, um, I think the virtual convention is a great opportunity for people to give presenting a shot. When I prepare to record, first I do it late at night when my family is sleeping so that nobody slams a door or photobombs my videos. Every time I make a video, it seems to take at least 10 takes, so I don't want any extra noise. I have started to type out my script and split my screen so that I'm recording myself on one side of the screen and have my script pulled up on the other side. This has brought me down to four or five takes each time rather than nine or 10. Not great, but it's better. Uh, I try to find a blank background so that I can record and not have distractions behind me and try to have as good of light as possible to eliminate as many shadows as I can. 
A couple of tools that I have found especially helpful when virtual teaching and with my vi virtual presentations are Screencast-O-Matic and WeVideo. I discovered Screencast-O-Matic last spring and actually just started using WeVideo in September. So WeVideo and Screencast-O-Matic probably have a lot of the same features. I just happen to like Screencast-O-Matic better because I have become more comfortable with it. I've used it longer. Um, some things I like about it is that you can uh, screen record different sizes of your screen. You can um, just use the webcam and screen and record yourself, or you can do the dual function, which I'm doing right now, which is the screen and the webcam at the same time. When you're done, uh, you can edit your video. You can edit the vocals very simply, cut out the beginning, um, use the arrows. Okay, that part's gone now. And you can hear it as you go along, so you can play it to know where you want to crop. You can also crop your video. Um, so if I wanted to make this smaller here, I could do that. Um, and there's many other features. So um, this is where I've become comfortable for my editing um, purposes of my video. But then I can use these videos and upload them into um, WeVideo. So I'll take you over there. And then in WeVideo, I can drop my videos. I upload them here, import them. Then I can just drop them down, drag and drop down into this video section. And then, um, you know, if I'm using different ones, just put them together. And then you can also add audio behind it. And there's lots of free audio in here that you can use. Um, and you just insert and push. And then at the end, when you're done, you finish it and it's ready to go. So those are my two favorite um, recording fe features and recording um, programs. Hi, my name is Bill Casey, and I'm going to show you a quick video on some of the things I do in order to make my videos. Um, I do have a lot of consideration to really my setup. Uh, I do like to have something in the background like I have here, so it's not just my face that people are looking at. In, it might be something like a PowerPoint or a web page or like a Google slide presentation like I have here. Uh, and then I will have my face up there in many different ways uh, with whatever camera I have, uh, whatever device I'm using. And in this case, I am doing this on Zoom. So I'm actually in a Zoom call and I'm sharing my screen and showing it so it can kind of show my face. I, I like to have kind of that background for people to look at as well. Another good thing with Zoom is you can easily bring multiple people into your Zoom session as well, oh, as you see here. So right now I've got my iPad that's basically broadcasting. You could see I'm behind a green screen that I use. I do like using a green screen. You can use just about any color in Zoom as long as it's one solid color, I mean, even white, and that will give you a better background crisper image when it comes down to it. It's not just the camera. It, it's having that background that's one consistent color that's gonna give you that sharper image of the person who's in front of it. So as you can see here, I've got um, a green screen behind me while I am broadcasting all this, but that's not the only thing. I also have uh, several lights that are set up in the right position so that the lighting comes in and gives me the lighting that I need uh, in order to make sure that everything kind of comes out well on the screen. Um, the camera that I use uh, is just a typical Logitech camera, but one thing I like to do is seek uh, software programs that use that Logitech or other camera that I might have. And so in the case here, I'm bringing on the screen, you can see this is something that Logitech makes that allows me to adjust the screen so I can adjust uh, the angle of the camera uh, within the program itself. I can make it smaller or bring it in closer. There's all kinds of camera effects and things you do as well. Uh, this is something you can easily do in Zoom uh, if you're using some type of other software like that. It will give you an option when you select your video to not just select a camera, but to select the software that might be running it. So I would, lo I would log into my Logi Capture program first, then I would go to Zoom and uh, make sure that this is what I'm selecting for my camera. 
Uh, I think a microphone is important too, as far as a good quality of sound. So if you have like a laptop and it's not working very well, there's lots of different microphones that you could plug in yourself and make it easier for people to hear others that you can buy that really aren't that expensive. It gives you lots of different options uh, when it comes down to it. So one other thing that I might use and do a lot of times is if I'm doing live broadcasts or if um, I wanna get content quickly up and usable with multiple ways of doing it, uh, I'll easily just go to um, something like YouTube. Like here's my YouTube account right now. The good thing about YouTube is the fact that I can just simply upload a video directly to here. This is the dashboard. If you have a Google account, then you have a YouTube account. So you can go to YouTube and you can log in and uh, you're able to create content through YouTube. You can create it directly through the camera that you have here uh, or, um, or you can make a video and you can upload it directly to your channel. The nice thing about doing that is it gets it somewhere for you to be able to share or you keep keep it private and unlisted and just share it individually with people. Uh, it's just a nice format to have out there so that you can quickly find it and keep it in one place. So lots of different ways um, that you can use uh, different tools. <coughs> Excuse me, but in this case, one of the things that I'm using to record everything that's going on is Camtasia Studio. So really, I could do this in multiple ways. There's a lot of different types of programs out there that I could do this. Loom is another one that allow me to do like a presentation and have my picture on there as well. Like I said, in this case, I'm doing like a Zoom call. Uh, in case I wanted to bring other people in and talk. But then Camtasia Studio is the software that I'm using to help process it all. So hopefully this will help you out a little bit as far as some of the things to consider. Like I said, consider what your, your background's gonna be like, um, your setup, have more than one screen so that you can easily move content in and out back and forth. Have good lighting, good microphone, have control of that camera so that you'll get the best possible presentation you can when it comes down to it. Like I said, hope this helps and hope uh, you're considering presenting at this year's convention. Way to access QuickTime Player is to go to the upper right hand corner and use the Spotlight Search. When you're in the Spotlight Search, you're going to type in QuickTime Player, hit return. This menu that comes up is going to play all multimedia pictures or files that you have. For now, we want to record, so we're going to hit cancel. We're going to go up to the top where it says file. If I want to record a new movie, my image will appear in a big screen. Hi, how's everyone doing? I'm going to close that out because that's a little awkward. File, audio, if I just want my audio recorded, or new screen recording. That's what we're currently using right now is this new or the new screen recording. Your options will have more options if this was the first time I was recording, but since I'm recording now, the options are limited, but it's capture the entire screen, capture the selected window, which is what we have right now, or a portion where I can resize the window as need be. Since I'm already recording a QuickTime video, I could stop it right here, but this is the options is where I'm going to lead you to. Save to preview or desktop. I usually either go desktop or in this case the preview. Timer, I like, usually like the five seconds, but for now I have it at none. But here we go. Make sure that the show mouse pointer is highlighted and this will show every time you click or make a selection on your screen, it will record with a big dot onto it. This is the easiest way to get into QuickTime Player. For screen recording using the record audio feature, we're going to animate different action points and then as a speaker or presenter all we need to worry about is advancing the slides and adding bullet points. Let's get started. For the first slide, my title slide, I have my script using the speaker notes. I typed in what I want to say. I have right here a built-in appearing. These are what's going to appear when I click on the button. But let's do an audio recording by going to insert, 
record audio. I have two options to close it or to record it. Obviously we want to record it for now, so here we go. Welcome to screen recording using Keynote. Any video trimming or editing will be done on iMovie for final sharing. I can edit it. I can preview the clip. Welcome to screen recording using Keynote. Any video. So I did not like that beginning. So I'm going to edit. And when I hit the edit button, I'm brought up with anything in the blue or the audio which I'm going to be using. So I'm going to drag the beginning all the way to the start where there's where I actually start speaking and I'm gonna move that a little bit over that way so now when I preview it video trimming or editing will be done on iMovie for final sharing let's drag that back to the beginning and preview welcome to screen recording using keynote any video perfect from here I could record a certain seg segment by trimming it, I could trim it out and add it in, or I can delete it. I'm happy with that nine second clip, so I want to insert it. This audio file icon can be placed anywhere on the slides, but for simplicity reasons, I always leave it in the lower right hand corner. When I see this, now I want to go to animate, and I want to check my build order because I want the audio clip to start off immediately I'm gonna click and say after the transition I'm gonna give myself one second before the audio clip is going to play when it plays it will show the screencasting on Apple and then I will click Keynote and iMovie to appear for the second slide, I have my name, my position, and what district I'm with, with IAFERD. Here is my script. Let's record. My name is Eric Chan and a member of the IAFERD Northeastern District. I currently hold the positions of social media co-chair and delegate at large. Once again, when I preview it, there's that long pause that I'm not happy with. So I will edit and I will slide that to the beginning and now preview. My name is Eric Chan and a member of the IAFERD Northeastern. Remember, the reason why I want to eliminate this is I'm going to give myself one second after I insert in the build order. So you will see the IAFERD. Northeastern District, Social Media, and Delegate at Large are all on their own slide. Audio clip, I need to move up to the top. After the transition, one second, and then everything else will be on a click. So this body is actually this little space part right there, so I'll just remember to click a little bit faster when I get there. One more example, for the agenda, I type my script right there. I have each one of these bullet points coming in separately. Insert, record audio. Today we will be using Apple Computer to record this video with Keynote. We will be skipping at the use of QuickTime Player for the third example. If you need to speed up any parts during the video, I will use iMovie. Insert, place that there, build order. Take this audio file, send it to the top. On transition, one second, while everything else is on a click. Yes, I do check my presentations just to make sure. I've saved time, and what I've done was I pre-recorded, so here's my audio. I can test it out. Keep so now that we have this done, as a presenter, 
All I am focused on is advancing the slide and hitting the bullet points on cue and hitting my mark. This first slide was just my notes to start it off, so I'm actually going to drag that all the way to the bottom for this example. Go back to the top because this is where I want to start my session. I am going to go to play and I have a record slideshow option under play. When I click on that or select that, I'm in presenter view. I have my current slide that will be recording. I have the next slide and it tells me I have two builds. So that is going to be the build for the keynote and iMovie right there on top of the audio file. So when I'm ready to record, I will hit the pause button. But note, I want to turn on my mute because now I'm not speaking as a presenter. My audio presentation will do so. All I'm doing is advancing the clips using the right arrow key or hitting and tapping on the mouse key. So I mute it here. As you can see, there's no audio going. But if I'm talking here, that means I will be recording over my audio, which is not what I want to do. So I mute myself, and I'm going to hit record. Remember, every time I advance the bullet points, I'm using the right arrow key for me, or you can tap on the mouse button. You get a timer. Welcome to screen recording using Keynote. Any video trimming or editing will be done on iMovie for final sharing. My name is Eric Chan and a member of the IAFRD Northeastern District. I currently hold the positions of social media co-chair and delegate at large. Today, we will be using Apple Computer to record this video with Keynote. We will be skipping at the use of QuickTime Player for the third example. If you need to speed up any parts during the video, I will use iMovie. Keynote offers a wide range of features and layouts to enhance a presentation. By using a slide deck, we have cue cards for the ease of use and provide talking points. Keynote is part of the included software when you have an Apple computer or iPad. You can do this with iMovie can be used for beginners and intermediate video editors. Please watch my video on iMovie for the iPad for ideas on the basics of video editing. You can use the same features on a Mac computer. It is included iMovie is included with all Apple computers and iPads. iMovie is a great way to trim videos and also add next level effects. When you're done recording, all you're going to do is hit the record button again. Now you'll notice I made one mistake earlier, but for this example, I'm not going to redo the video. I hit the stop button right there. So there is a video. Now when I export it, I'm going to export it as a movie. Slideshow recording, that's what I want. Resolution, I keep it at 720 You can because it works best with iPads. I'm going to go Keynote. recordings video you can save it on your iCloud I'm gonna save it on my desktop and then I'm gonna export it it will create the video and then it will add it onto my desktop right there so when I edit my video I'm gonna place all three of these videos all in one using iMovie now if I minimize that, I have my third video. If I preview it. Welcome to screen recording using Keynote. 
Any video trimming or editing will be done on iMovie for final sharing. My name is Eric Chan and a member of the IAFER Northeastern District. I currently hold the positions of social media co-chair and delegate at large. So if you wondered how I got that preview without having to open it, all I'm doing is I select one click so it turns blue and then hitting the space bar to get the preview window to appear. I hope this has helped. If you have any questions, please reach out to any IAFERD member, especially those that did this presentation. Have a great day, good luck, and we can't wait to see your presentations. Hey, this is Mark and Becky Fulmer, and as IAFERD moves to a virtual convention for, for this year, we want to encourage you to consider putting in for a session or presentation. And as you think through that process, if you need any kind of help, please reach out, feel free to reach out to either one of us to help you out. Yeah, and we know that you just saw a number of different options and you might not be sure which is going to be the best for what you'd like to do. No problem. You know, if you let us know what you're thinking about doing, we can kind of help you think it through and think of the best, easiest, most efficient way for you to do it. And we'll even help you record it if you need help. So please reach out. That's why we've given you our contact information. It's super easy and um, we're happy to help you. We're really looking forward to an awesome uh, online event yeah. this year. Thanks guys. Thank you.